Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on when you're watching this video. This is the official announcement video for my next big project. Thank you guys so much for joining and let's get started. So to start off, I usually want to tell a joke to break the ice. So why can't the kid see the pirate movie? It was rated R. <laughs> you're not laughing? Oh. To start things off, I just want to talk a little bit more about what if Dale Hart was still alive. I know that most of you guys are here because of that series. I'm really grateful for that and I thank you guys so much for supporting me through that series and all the other videos that I have made recently. Unfortunately, to start off, I am going to have some bad news. I promised that I was going to make a 2017 version of What If Dale Earnhardt Was Still Alive. Unfortunately, that is not going to happen anytime soon. And simply it's because I'm ready to do this next bigger project. And also, I'm not entirely a fan of what happened in the previous, um, in the Dale Earnhardt universe. Because what happened was, I had Mark Martin go into a coma, I killed off my Garvey, and then I did some little thing where there was a strike. It did have some meaning, yes, but I'm not 100% proud of making those decisions. Did it make the series as a whole distinct? Yes, but the whole meaning and point of the series kind of went away because of that. Because the point is, of that series was I wanted to show more in depth what it would be like if Dale Earnhardt was still alive. And then 2006 through today, I just wanted to show the team and driver changes. But since you guys asked so much who won all the races and who won the championships and whatnot, it kind of changed the series with off on its head. I don't want to do that again. And so I'm sorry that 2017 is not going to happen. I can maybe hit on it sometime down the road. But as I just said, it's not going to be any time soon. To start off with this new project, the inspiration I got from this was about six months ago because I've been looking through comments and I noticed a bunch of people had several suggestions for different what ifs. Like, what if David Allison was still alive? What if Alan Quickie was still alive? What if Adam Petty was still alive? What if Riverside was still a track? The list keeps going on and on and on and on. So that kind of got me thinking, not as much, but what really kind of got me to do this project was that one week, you know, when I did nothing on YouTube or on social media, I was working out really hard one day, and when I work out, I usually don't think, but then once I'm done, it kind of just clicked. Because the original plan was to do what if Adam Petty was still alive. I teased that, I talked about it a lot. That was gonna be the original plan. But what got me thinking was, if Adam Petty was still alive, would Canero and Jr. still be alive? Would Dale Earnhardt still be alive? How would that all work out? I noticed that there were other what ifs within that what if that could be a potential option. I backed up a few steps because it's like, what if Davey Allison was still alive? Would that still have an effect on the other drivers? And then I took it even a step farther back. So with lots of thinking, lots of planning, this is what my new project is going to be about. I'm going to start in 1987. That year was important in NASCAR because that was when the superstar Tim Richmond was diagnosed with HIV, which as you know, turns into AIDS. Richmond had to retire in 1987, and then he died two years later because of AIDS. So the first what if I want to hit on was, what if Tim Richmond was healthy the whole time, and he didn't have any of those problems, and he was able to be healthy throughout his entire career? So that's one thing. But as we then move forward through that what if, what if Davey Allison was still alive because Tim Richmond was still alive? And what if Alan Kowicki was still alive? So instead of just pondering and thinking about that, I'm going to get right to the point and say, what if yes? What if they are all still alive? And so to be more specific, Tim Richmond, Davey Allison, Alan Kowicki, Neil Bonnet before his career ending crash. Now what happened was in 1990 in the first Darlington race, he had a crash that made him pretty much sideline for a majority of races. He did a few races in that 31 car, but then eventually died in 1994. But I'm talking about what if Neil Bonnet was still an active driver until he retired? What if Arnie Irvin never had his career ending crash in 1994? What if John Nemechek, Joe Nemechek's brother, never died? What if Kenny Irwin Jr. never died? What if Adam Petty never died? What if Tony Roper never died? What if Dale Earnhardt never died? And what if Blaze Alexander never died in that ARCA crash? Yes, that does sound like a lot. I'll get to that more. 
But it's a thought, right? Like what if all those drivers were still alive and they didn't have their lives end early because of an incident? For the most part, that was none of their doing. I wanna dive further though. Not just drivers, but tracks. So again, three major tracks that left NASCAR were Riverside, North Wilkesboro, and Rockingham. What if those tracks did not leave? And those tracks he had one race still on the schedule. And then what's more, what I would like to do eventually down the road is add more tracks that should have a cup schedule, but did not, like Gateway, Pikes Peak, Montreal, among other tracks. This will create a whole new timeline of events. And it's definitely I wanna show you guys. And then what's more, another big three things too, no chase. So what if every single season ended as normal without any playoff or any forced drama in that sense? No car of tomorrow. So the entire spectrum, we stick with the original cup and we race back to the line every single time. I would also say, what if we did have only one sponsor per one driver? Cause I mentioned that in a previous episode of Griff Talks. What if that was the case? So like, what if Kevin Harvick only had Jimmy Johns? What if in 2008, Dale Jr. only had Amp Energy, et cetera, et cetera. I would do that for the most part. The only time would probably be not the case are those lower teams that, you know, are trying to find sponsors. I'll be okay with throwing in a couple sponsors here and there, but for the most part, one sponsor, one driver. I've also thought about what if Pontiac never left NASCAR? Now, the only problem I would have with that is if Pontiac never leaves, there will be a time where five manufacturers will be racing. That one I want to leave up to you guys because do you guys want to see Pontiac still be there? But then it'd be with Toyota? Or it's like, do you want Pontiac to replace Toyota? And so like, what if Toyota never went into NASCAR? You know, that is something I want to leave up to you guys. So now you're going to ask yourself, Griff, how are you able to do this? Like, how is this going to go? So to start things off, I'm going to make a big prologue video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show driver, team and track changes from 1987 through 2000. And in that spectrum, I'll talk about where different drivers go because other drivers are still alive. So it's gonna kind of like make a breakdown effect. I'll talk about some of the tracks where like, because for example, fun fact, Sonoma replaced Riverside on the schedule. So like, where would Riverside go? Where would Sonoma go? Among other things. I will also say for every season, I'll do like what I did in the final Dale Earnhardt video, I will say who the winners are of every race, plus I'll show the top 10 in points from every single year. Now it's not all the details, but 1987 through 2000, I kinda wanna skim over because the real part I wanna tackle is 2001 on forward. Now starting in 2001, what I will do is, you remember the condensed races I showed in NR2003 Short 33? That is what I'm gonna do for every single race in the season. So every single condensed race will be roughly about 10% of the actual length, but I'm gonna do it in full. Now, in terms of how the videos are gonna go, this is how I'm gonna break it down. So first of all, I will do every single race at 10%. I'm not gonna show every single race in full because that would take forever. And I do not wanna take a full year to do one season, considering that we're still 17 years from where we are at now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break each year down into seven videos. The first video in the season would be Speed Weeks. So I'll talk about the Bud Shootout, I'll talk about the Gatorade Duels, and I'll talk about the Daytona 500. And not just talk, but like, especially for the Daytona 500, I'll show that in full. And so it'll be like a 20 lap condensed race. The second video will talk about races two through 10. The third video will be races 11 through 18, plus the All-Star Race. That is something I missed in the Dale Earnhardt video, and I actually want to tackle in this version. The fourth video will be races 19 through 24. The fifth video will tackle races 25 through 30. And then finally, the sixth video will be races 31 through 36. Plus, I'll discuss off-season changes. For example, let's just say in 2001, Davey Allison has a poor season. Then it is an option that Davey Allison might switch teams. And it's not because I decided, it's because Davy Allison had a poor run and it makes most sense moving on to the next year. The seventh video will be a highlight video and that will kind of express my creativity and I'll just show 
different highlights from that year as kind of like a compilation music video, if you will. Now inside each part, I will show one condensed race and it's full. And in that one condensed race, I will go ahead and show it in its entirety, everything that happened, kind of like what I did with Intertelsely Short 33. For the other ones, you'll see like two or three highlights, but for every single one, you'll see where every car lined up, plus cars that did not qualify, as well as the final results. And so you'll see where every driver finished from first through 43rd, which also reminds me, there will be 43 cars starting every single race. So on that side note, one track you will not see is Laguna Seca because the only version of Laguna Seca available in Inner 2003 only has 30 cars. I could make some weird exception, but no. Unfortunately, Laguna Seca will not be featured in this series. Now, one issue I kind of want to bring up with you guys is overtime. Now, in the Inter in the Inter 2003 Short 33 video, the race did end under caution. I was worried about showing that, but I want to do it anyway to see what you guys think. You guys did say it should be better off if we did have an overtime finish. The problem is there's no way for me to do a restart lineup single file. And just a side note, I will not do double file restarts. I'm sorry, that's actually one thing that I do not support is double file restarts. So I want it to be single file restarts all the way through, but if I do the green white checker, that would be double file. So like I could do the thing from the 10 winners challenge where like the cars were spread out more, but they're still side by side, or I don't know. Like I'm, that's something that does concern me because I'm fine with race, ending the race under caution because I mean, there's still like an entire race like to go and it was the AI's fault that they decided to wreck at the end of the race. So I don't know. I'm kind of very hesitant on adding overtimes in this series. So that'll be one issue if you guys want to comment about that, talk about that, and then whatever gets the most support, I'll highly consider. Another option I can do too is I can maybe like go ahead and end the race under caution, but then do like an alternate, alternate universe and be like, what if this race did end under green? And then I can maybe do like a 10 winners challenge thing of that, even though that would take up a heck of a lot of time. So again, lots of options out there, but I'm kind of stuck on which one I want to do. Now, yes, this is going to be a long-term project. I'm pretty committed to that. But the thing is, I'm not going to be doing this as my only project forever because in July, I am going to do the 2017 Summer Showdown. That is confirmed. I am doing that the third year in a row. I will do that. Also, at the end of 2017, I will start up the second season of the 10 Winners Challenge. So the reason for that is so I'm doing different projects so that I, I am not stuck doing this one project all the time. But the thing is, I'm committed to this because not just am I going to get a bunch of satisfaction and information, but you guys will as well. Because one last thing, in the final video of every season, I will in the description give a Excel document and it'll show all the points, all the finishing spots of every single driver. That way you guys know like where you are in the loop and in all the statistical people, you guys can stats it up and you guys want to make like average finishes, number of wins, number of pulls, et cetera, et cetera. You guys are more than welcome to play with that information. And so finally, this announcement video is kind of like a part one because as I've mentioned before, the next episode of Griff Talks, I'm going to answer your guys' questions regarding this series. So I try to hit on as much as possible, but if you guys have any questions about an area I did not discuss or potentially really anything about the series, please let me know. Either, and you can hit me up in numerous different ways. Comment section down below is an option. You guys can tweet at me at Griff Dog Real. You guys can hit me up on messaging on Facebook. You guys can hit me up on Instagram. I am also going to give the option of my email is down below in the description. So if you guys want to still ask a question, but you want to remain anonymous, you guys are more than welcome to do so and ask me the question. The only thing you must know though, is that I will answer the question in the video. I'm not going to answer the question just straight up to you because your question might help another person as well as myself. I try to give you guys as much information, but I'm just human. I'm only one person. 
So if you guys have any questions or suggestions or recommendations to make this thing the best project there can be, please let me know in the comment section down below. Oh, and one last thing, I forgot to mention this. I don't have a title yet for this series. I don't know what to call it yet. I thought of a couple different ideas, like for example, one is The Great What If, but that name's already been taken. That's right, I went there. Another series I thought about too is What If Everything Is Great? But Cobblish took that, and that's gonna be one of those memes where it's like, you see it three years later, and it's like, wow, that is so outdated. If you guys have any great suggestions on what to call this series, let me know. I'll greatly consider it. I might even use it or modify it in some way. So all in all, thank you guys for watching. I can't wait to start this conversation with you guys. And this great what if video is going to be fantastic. I guarantee it. So thank you guys so much for, in, for watching this formal video, if you will. And let's keep this conversation going. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you next time.